So you have a cool season lawn, or you're in the Northeast like I am in Pennsylvania, and you wanna have a nice looking lawn. I've been doing this program for a few years now, works well for me, and as long as you put a good effort in, you're gonna have a pretty nice lawn. That's what we're talking about today. So first things first, I'm here in my shed. A lot of people ask me questions about my shed. This is the back corner, fertilizer, dethatcher, core aerator, blah, blah, blah. You gotta have a few tools. And when you think about the tools you're gonna need, you're gonna need at a minimum something to spread fertilizer with. You're gonna need something to mow with, obviously. <laughs> and uh, the dethatcher is kind of like advanced, right? And the core aerator is advanced. Uh, you don't necessarily need them, but they make the job a lot easier. But right now we are in March and the beginning of March, what did I do? I went ahead and raked my lawn. Now I have over a half an acre, didn't rake the whole thing, too much to do. But the areas that are always seen on the front end, uh, I went ahead and raked them just to break up some stuff. You don't need to rake hard, just rake it out. I did it one time, uh, pulled up a little bit of material, not too much, but I at least got the, uh, the grass kind of shaking and moving and you know, getting ready for you know much warmer temperatures like today where we're in the 60s. Um, after that, what you're gonna wanna do is you have to mow, mow. If you don't, go ahead and lay down a fertilizer. The one I recommend is uh, purely organic. And the reason I recommend that is because it's an organic uh, fertilizer. That means it's basically, you can, you can put as much down as you want, be reasonable. <laughs> they have stuff on the back that tells you how to do it. Um, I usually just run my stuff in the middle setting. Like on this, I'll do like a 12 to 15. And the reason I go with a purely organic versus like a synthetic or, or like a malorganite, which I do use, but this first uh, feeding for your lawn, you wanna make sure that you have, you know, you're building a foundation for the year. Organic fertilizers like purely organic, they're not gonna like, boom, give you that dark green color. They're gonna put vitamins and minerals and it's a multivitamin basically for your lawn. So you wanna get your lawn kick started on the right, you know, kick, kicked off running on the right foot. So putting that down there is going to get a good base. And uh, I have some rain coming up here in about four days. So with that, you actually wanna water it in so it breaks up. It looks like, uh, like barley or like, uh, I don't know, it's big yellow chunks compared to like the really fine ones of malorganite, uh, you wanna water them in a little bit. So the fact that it's gonna rain in a few days is good. It'll get down into the ground and uh, do what it needs to do. So I'm talking about purely organic. I'm talking about this right here. You can get this at Home Depot and stuff. It smells really nice because it's organic. It's, uh, I believe it, it's very similar to like the chicken feed that you'd see that people put on their lawns for like a supplement. But this is what I use, at least right now. Um, they changed it. They used to have a, a bright green, this is from last year, they had a brighter green bag, now it's a little darker green. But that's gonna get your lawn kick started really well. Now with doing all that, you need to map out your lawn a little bit. This is advanced, you don't have to do it. A lot of people say, you know, square footage and stuff. If you follow the directions on the back of stuff, and you figure out how much you need, you're gonna have a nice lawn. If you put a good effort in, you're gonna have a nice lawn. You wanna go to the next step, go ahead and map out your property, and then just keep a listing of everything that you do. And then, you know, as you get really good results, you can see, oh, I did this on this date. And you can build something over the course of time, you know, maybe the course of five years doing this, you're gonna find out what really works for your lawn, and then you'll have just something you do every year that you do you know, pretty much the same for, uh, every year. So what do I do here? So what do I do? Well, today I'm gonna to put fertilizer down. It is March 21st. It's gonna be all in the 60s starting today, going forward at least the next seven days for a high, and then for a low it's gonna be like 38. So I feel pretty good about putting some fertilizer down. And I'm just gonna write on here, you know, March 21st, uh, fertilizer, here's the setting I use, blah, blah, blah. Now, last year, the first fertilizer I put down was, I think it was April 5th or 9th. It was around there. I left it get a little warmer. I wanna get a little bit of a kickstart going on the fertilizer, so got about a two week head start compared to last year. But as you can see, that's my lawn care plan for right now. And uh, I'll fill it in as I go along. So as far as fertilizer spreader goes, I had a Agrifab that a lot of people recommend and I really hated it. Um, it just wouldn't spread evenly. And then at some points it would stop uh, spreading. And I tried everything I could think of and made it, you know, put it together per the instructions. I just was never happy with it. So we went with the Earthway and this one definitely, granted it has a much smaller capacity at one bag. Uh, 
can fit a bag in here of stuff, 40 pounds, 40 or 50 pounds. But uh, you're gonna have to refill a little bit more, but I'm not really, I don't really care about that. You know, either way, you're gonna have to put a bag in. You're gonna have to put the same amount of bags in. You're just gonna have to do it at a little bit sooner of a frequency, no big deal. Um, especially with the fact that this spreads way better and more uh, efficiently and it has like a side guard. Um, so I'm going to use this Earthway. I think it's a 2600A plus or plus dash A. Uh, I'll put a link down below. But uh, just putting this together, you can see that it uh, has a much better operation than AgriFab. So that's what I'll be using today. And then basically going around and assessing what you need is uh, another thing you want to do. That's obviously the first thing you want to do. I would do that more like when you're raking and you're going over the yard prior to doing anything. Just assess what your yard's doing. Um, for me, uh, from when we moved in here till now, we've um, I've overseeded the back and the front, not the one side of the front. The main part of the front is like my project for the spring. Should I have done it in the fall time? Would have been an easier and a better time to do it because you're not going to have as many weeds and I can put uh, pre-emergent down. If you do it in the fall time, you can put pre-emergent down if you don't do it in the springtime. But since I'm doing that, I can't put pre-emergent down, which means that uh, I might get some weeds in the future. No big deal to me. Um, because I just didn't have the money to uh, you know, lay down really good uh, seed and then peat moss. I didn't have all that money to do that. So I chose to do the backyard last year, which you guys saw that fall lawn care overseeding project videos uh, that I did. Uh, and that turned out great. I'm gonna do that in the front in the springtime. So mow low, uh, core aerate, you know, dethatch core aerate, pick it all up with a bagger, throw seed down, don't mow it for like two weeks, water it. Uh, I'm gonna let it get a little bit warmer obviously, uh, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do in the front yard. So I've assessed that that's a problem and I gotta do that. Uh, for you, you're just gonna have to go around to your different areas, you know, like, oh, here's an area where I'm gonna have to do a little bit of reseeding or take a little bit of time to uh, take care of it. Or if there's stuff you've been wanting to do, little patches or whatever, do that. But uh, mostly you wanna overseed in the fall. So if you're overseeding in the springtime, don't put pre immersion down or your seed's not gonna do anything. Um, so you're gonna have to accept that you're gonna get some weeds and you might have to do some post emergent um, weed killer in the future once those uh, once that grass that you just laid down actually has a foundation to it. Um, so you're going to assess, you're going to make a plan, and then you're going to start you know, doing what you need to do. For me, today, I'm fertilizing, and then uh, next step is whenever the grass gets to the length of, of uh, mowing it at two and a half inches, because I have uh, tall fescue grass, I'm going to go ahead and mow it. As far as grass seed goes, the Rebels Tall Fescue. That's what I laid in the backyard. I laid a little bit of Scots, but mainly I used the Rebels Tall Fescue. Uh, in Pennsylvania, Tall Fescue is gonna work great throughout the summer uh, and every other time. It's just a really good all around grass for cool season grasses. And uh, you know, when it's going to get really hot outside, Tall Fescue is gonna help you out there. So I got some more bags of this. That's what I'm gonna use on the front yard, the one side of the front yard. The other side I overseed last year. So I just have one part I gotta work on. Um, so, like I said, once it warms up a little bit, I'm gonna do that. So anyway, that's what you wanna do in the Northeast if you were in March to April. That's all you gotta do. Fer uh, assess, plan, fertilize, uh, maybe do uh, some dethatching if you didn't do that in the, f in the fall time. I recommend in the fall time, you just do that as a, nor uh, a normal thing, uh, dethatching. Super easy. I got this Brinley dethatcher that just, you just drive around your tractor. Uh, worst case, you use, if you have a smaller yard, maybe like an electric dethatcher. Now I used to have one that used to be right here, but I got rid of it because with a ha over half an acre, it's just not feasible to have the little uh, 24 inch uh, dethatcher that's electric cord and stuff, just doesn't make sense. So for me, riding mower is gonna be the way. For you though, if you have a smaller yard uh, and you're not going, you know, uh, 75 yards <laughs> to the other side of your property, uh, it might make more sense to use the electric one. Like, uh, I think it's uh, Ego Power, or uh, I forget what it's called, but it's green, Greenworks. The Greenworks one, it worked great, just was not feasible for the size of the yard I have. So those are the things you wanna get, wanna get to uh, pay attention to when you're doing your yard care. And like I said, even if you mess up a thing or here or there a little bit, it's no big deal your yard's gonna look the way that you, the amount of effort you put into it. 
if you put a good effort into it, you're going to have a nice yard, regardless of if you make this little mistake or that little mistake, or you miss a day here or there. It's really not as specific as a lot of people put to it, in my opinion. Um, I'm not the kind of person that, as far as my yard goes, I just want to put some stuff down. I don't really care about like, you know, did I have a little bit left over? Did I put a little bit too much on the ground? If you're using organics like Melorganite and purely organic, you don't gotta worry about that stuff. So I recommend that stuff. Uh, so right now, get your purely organic. If you put too much down, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna do any harm to your yard. And the positive with purely organic is the fact that I can put that down and I don't gotta worry about my dog or my kid, you know, running around in the yard the next day. Or even that, I, if I put it in the morning, I don't gotta worry about them running around at night because it's not synthetic, it's not a chemical. So that's the other thing I like about uh, organic stuff, like purely organic. So that's what I'm doing this year. If you have uh, you know, a cool season yard or a northeast yard, and you're getting into doing that this year, uh, these are some tips that I recommend that I've been doing and that have been successful for me. And hopefully uh, you can learn something from them. Uh, and if not, or if you have a different way of going about things that you do normally every year, go ahead and put that in the comments down below so we can all see it. Until next time, later.